other courses also like 24th of jan we have data science for all okay and then february we are having another course on um, medical uh, imaging oh Im yeah by the way and then I we have course on machine know, learning for computer <coughs> for medical uh -huh. there are uh, there are three uh, courses Okay. Like one hour courses, one one hour ninety minutes self learning courses mm -hmm. that participants can take and also obtain digital badges. That okay. is like how in medical people are using cloud. That's one course. Second is how in medical people are using data science analytics basically, and mm -hmm. third is how in medical people are using AI. So it's like very foundational, only designed for medical guys, pharma guys, uh, so that they can get a perspective of. What is happening? What's the research? You know, uh, uh, how people are leveraging it in production, like hospitals, research laboratories. Um, if you wish, you know, we can uh, sometime later discuss about it, and you can introduce that to the students. Ah, uh, definitely. I mean, this is a good information. Uh, we can. I mean, if it is a one and a half hours or uh, two hours, we can definitely uh, make it available to. I mean, during the program, we can. Uh, make it uh, available to participants. We can do that, and, and okay. the best part is once they complete, they'll also get digital badges for those. So okay, that's, that's, that's very nice motivation. I see, that's wonderful. And uh, then we have machine learning for computer vision. I think that's in February, so I have to start <laughs> publicizing that course. Yeah. <laughs> Lot of work gets into hosting one event. Uh, we are uh, just waiting for a. It seems that participants today are a bit relaxed because of Saturday and last day. Yeah, yeah. The program. Can we wait for a couple of minutes? Sure, sure. One, I will wait for a couple. Only 100 participants have 117. Sure, sure. So participants, a very good morning. I hope you heard the conversation between me and Dr. Mani Madhukar. Uh, so you can also go through those uh, topics. Uh, Dr. Madhukar uh, gave you an idea as to how to access different courses. In fact, I have also gone through some of the courses. Uh, good morning, Preet. Good morning, everybody. We let let's wait for a, a couple of minutes. Uh, meanwhile, if you want, you can share. I hope you can share your slide. There's not not an issue. Uh, Yeah, I can share my screen now. Thank you. Okay, so participants, uh, good morning all of you once again. We have uh, today uh, another very important... Recording in progress. Another very important uh, uh, lecture, series of lectures by Dr. Madhukar because yeah, many of you were asking that uh, what are different uses, how it can be utilized. Yesterday you had a wonderful session by Mr. Santosh Mishra, IAS, who used blockchain for governance. And uh, now you can see uh, another expert, Dr. Madhukar, has already uh, taken uh, lectures on hyperledger and hyperledger fabric. Now, how uh, use cases, um, I mean, you can, through use cases, you can develop uh, those applications. Thank you, Dr. Madhikar, once again for accepting our invitation for this course of lectures. We welcome you on behalf of all the academies. Thank you. Thank you. We wait for a couple of more minutes, ma'am. couple of days of you know hectic learning for you very well you know we can understand that and uh, it's not easy to grab all of this so much of his stuff you know in in such a short span of time it takes a while to actually 
uh, assimilate, ingest all of this data, all of this knowledge which has been passed on. So, so thanks for your patience. And uh, in this session today, uh, I'll be talking about the use cases of some of them which are already in production. Some of them, you know, uh, uh, I would have worked or associated myself, you know, with some startups that I have worked on. I'll talk about those as well. So we'll we'll discuss a lot of these use cases today. Because technology is better understood when we understand the implementation part of it, right? So in order to appreciate anything, that's why people also say, right, you need to get hands on it, right? So if you want to appreciate a blockchain or, you know, the impact that the blockchain can make, uh, what is required is, you know, we need to uh, understand where it's been used, how people are leveraging it, what's the benefit that they, that they you know, derive out of it. That's what is important. Um, okay, so let me actually get started with this. First of all, why are we, we, you know, we have been discussing about all of this. Why, why blockchain, right? There are so many technologies out there in market, right? Why blockchain of all of them? Okay, um, so the major reason, you know, that we see uh, from a <coughs> technology point of view, uh, where blockchain can really make a difference is whenever, you know, you find a, a place, whenever you find a situation where there can be a potential for, you know, some manipulation, potential for some fraud in the transaction, blockchain, yes, of course, will really help. I'll, I can give you a few examples to this, right? We often buy a lot of things from uh, online platforms and uh, most of the time, if not most of the time, few times we really, you know, get into a situation where we ordered for something and we got something else. This is so much, uh, you know, <coughs> prevalent. What I really see today is, uh, these days is, a uh, lot of cosmetics that you order online, right? Uh, what you actually order versus what you get is nowhere comparable so you will get uh, you know uh, forged uh, you know things that you actually get in against the order for a genuine brand you don't get that brand right so uh, there is a lot of potential for fraud you know in those such transaction and this is small value let's talk about big value transactions right uh, even the scope is even bigger there right other thing is whenever there are multi-party transactions right two universities, three universities collaborating, discussing with each other. Let's say multiple researchers are from different uh, organizations brainstorming on some idea, right? Now, there can always be a case where there can be issues with the reconciliation of whatever they've been discussing, right? We call it as friction. Uh, so, such dispute management in, in case if any, yes, blockchain can be a good way of reconciliation. Uh, yes, it, it really helps there. Furthermore, uh, use cases where where there is there is an inherent need for trust, you know, between the transacting parties, right? Because that's the most important element whenever we do business, whenever we collaborate, right? So trust is most important there. So whenever that is the case, yes, blockchain can be a good good fit for technology adoption, and hence. You know, we talk about, or rather, we'll talk about major uh, uh, domains like finance, like uh, you know, governance, like healthcare, or like supply chain, where blockchain has really been successfully used, has made an impact. As Ma'am, you know, initially pointed out, uh, one of the speakers uh, yesterday who actually shared the experience about how they are using blockchain governance. <coughs> and by the way, India is very high on utilization of blockchain, right, uh, in governance, like Delhi. The current government is really very gungo about adopting blockchain in, and they have already, you know, put in use blockchain into so many uh, use cases which are right now in production as far as government is concerned, right? But before we get into the blockchain uh, use case space, we really need to understand where and uh, why we should be using blockchain. So we already discussed a few things, you know, on the, on the previous slide. Uh, so. But we should definitely understand one point. Blockchain is not a one-stop solution to everything. Because the amount of overheads that a blockchain brings along, uh, there should be a proper trade-off, there should be a proper thought process getting into, uh, should I be using blockchain or should I be using other distributed technologies which can really you know, make my life 
as simple as it would have been with a blockchain. So that thing. So whenever there is a problem to solve, right, a business problem to solve, whenever there are multiple parties transacting an identifiable business network available, whenever there is a requirement of trust in a network, right, yes, blockchain is a you know a good fit, right. Whenever we need a permanent record which should be immutable, uh, you know, indelible ledger, yes. Whenever we want, there should be no central point of control or central point of ownership, right? It should be more distributed. Everybody should have the same rights on the network. Yes, our uh, blockchain makes sense. Whenever we can convert the business rules into, you know, uh, smart contracts into into business decisions that can be governed through the code. Yes, blockchain can be a, a good fit there, right? Again, uh, our idea there, if the data is only used by one organization, probably it's not a good use case for blockchain, right? We typically talk about blockchain implementation when there are multiple parties, external, you know, stakeholders coming together and interacting, transacting, doing businesses. That's when we say, yes, blockchain can be a good fit. This is a slide which I have adopted from, uh, you know, uh, um, you know, the World Economic Forum's study, which talks about the characteristics of high potential use cases, right? So whenever we see that, uh, you know, there is a requirement for a shared depository. If you remember in, a, in my previous conversation, I was talking about in conventional businesses, everybody maintains their own ledgers, right? So the data is available, but the data is in silos, not talking to each other. So that really actually leads to a lot of discrepancies in data because everybody has a different view of a transaction at any point in time. Uh, so we would like to replace that with a shared repository so that everybody has the same view of the transaction and there are no scope for any uh, sort of, you know, uh, disparity there. Number two, whenever there are multiple entities engaging, multiple writers to this shared repository that we are talking about, uh, it can be so many use cases we already discussed and we will be discussing a few. So, whenever there are multiple writers up as part of that overall network, yes, blockchain, it's a potential blockchain use case. Uh, whenever there is a, any certain level of mistrust existing between the parties, yes, and most important, whenever there are one or more intermediaries or gatekeepers which are present to enforce trust. Now, if you remember in the last conversation, we said why blockchain? Because it helps in removing the intermediaries. When I'm saying intermediaries, I do not mean regulator guys, okay? In last session also I said, my conversation is focused more on private permissioned blockchains, right? And uh, in that case, what we discussed was, you know, a role of regulator is still there. If you see, if you remember the actor chart, which I was talking about, the actors in blockchain network, uh, the, there was a regulator is still there, right? Uh, we did not take away that. So we are talking here about multiple intermediaries or gatekeepers which are there to infuse trust between those transacting partners. Yes, in that case, blockchain is a, it's a potential blockchain use case. Whenever there are transaction dependencies, right? Whenever there is uh, dependencies between somebody doing X and then there is a workflow, then Y will do something based on X. Let's say typically a uh, or uh, leave management system in your campuses, in your colleges in case. So let's say a faculty has put a, a leave request for tomorrow, right? So the leave request will actually go to head of department who will approve, then it might actually go to the dean of academics who would approve, and then finally it might land up with the registrar who needs to approve, right? Uh, I'm just cooking it out. So, so you see that there is a workflow happening. So there is a dependency of transaction. The registrar cannot approve unless, you know, the chain below has approved. You know, it will not be visible to him like that. So in such situations, yes, blockchain can be a, it can be a good potential blockchain use case. Okay. Uh, feel free to put in a question on chat, guys. I will actually take it in uh, in some time. Uh, this is just a snapshot which talks about the potential blockchain use cases, you know, uh, very loosely. Uh, we will discuss some of these implementations as we go further in my conversation today. Right. So typically in, in banking, right, uh, you see often, right, uh, there are so many uh, historical evidences where we see things that the banks have been cheated by the, you know, the, the lenders, right, um, uh, people who have been taking loans from the banks, right, 
and there have been so many ways that they have been cheating the banks and hence converting the loans into uh, you know the uh, you know the, the the loans which cannot be repaid right so other cases there is you know people you look to launder money right uh, and hence kycs are again a very important part plays a very important part right uh you might remember the famous case of nirav modi right where there was this case of letter of guarantee you know which was uh, the way it was used issued forced all of that right uh cross border payments right? will will maybe we will dig deeper into this right so these are a couple of uh use cases which are very common in banking industry similarly if it go from a insurance industry right so uh proof of insurance claim processing some of this by the way is already on blockchain today guys right so after the uh you know intervention of the uh, the regulatory authority uh the insurance agencies insurance companies have now brought in a couple of use cases on blockchain right um so dispute resolution right in order to speed up the process in order to make the process more transparent yes they are adopting to blockchain financial markets you know for uh, post trade settlements asset tracking there are so many examples which are like there right like high value uh, paintings right diamonds there is there are a couple of companies which are actually working or uh, already solution is already live right? uh, like that so they are using uh, blockchain for actually trading of diamonds and so many more right right so so similarly right, there are so many uh, similar other uh, use cases in different segment like travel and transportation right uh, people this is the most low hanging use case the airline loyalty uh, program or even for that other retail loyalty programs people have been using blockchain or trying to use blockchain in so many ways right automotives i guess i we talked about this uh, in the previous uh, class as well right we are boeing has been using using the parts provenance uh, for the supply chain Uh, uh you know they've been used in blockchain right and then, then then they can be used for so many other things as well you know in this segment um so uh similarly you know media and entertainment this is one industry which is being you know really looking to adopt the blockchain because we know that there have been so many issues about uh rights rights for for the uh, disgrace right for uh, you know uh, the intellectual property rights for whatever they create right they have been using uh, blockchain uh in life sciences this is one area which has been really uh with needs a lot of uh, blockchain adoption right from tracing of counterfeit drugs you know in india out of 10 drugs that we use it is said that 7 to 6 to 7 drugs are spurious they are counterfeit uh so so much is the perforation of the cold chain cold chain is the one in which the drugs are actually transported right so there is a lot of counterfeit drugs in the market today blockchain can help solve that uh similarly the health records whenever you go to a you know a pet lab or a hospital the the records that you generate whether it's your x-ray whether it's your pet lab report or whether it's your any report right the, the way it's being used currently is is something that you do not have a control over isn't it uh, you know uh, these pet labs can sell this data to pharma companies pharmaceutical companies to hospitals to other you know stakeholders without you even being aware of that your data is being used right uh, so that's one area which is really uh, which really requires a strong adoption of such technologies again in public sector we already have been use uh, you know using it we have been seeing how government is using uh, blockchain for land records in couple of states in india right not just that you know for notarizing of documents for registration of motor vehicles uh you know all of these areas are the ones which are most low hanging fruit for adoption of blockchain energy and utilities this is one area which is already using very strong utilization of blockchain as a technology right for exchange of carbon credits and settlement of the same uh, other is you know people who are using who are actually using unconventional energy sources like uh like wind bills like you know solar uh, what they are doing is they are actually selling the surplus electricity back to the grid and the entire system is basically on a blockchain network so that both the buyer and the seller are insured that the you know uh, the whatever documentation is happening whatever money or or you know the units that they are contributing back to the grid are sort of you know put in a indelible ledger right something like that 
So we talked about you know uh, uh, different uh, use cases from food industry point of view, from supply chain point of view, cross border payments, digital identity, and more. Right. So uh, again, you know, uh, this is what we were just talking about. Right. How in healthcare people are uh, now getting control of their own medical data. Right. So that. Uh, they can increase the quality of care. They can actually monetize the data that they get, right? Similarly, in automobiles, the entire supply chain traceability is finding a lot of traction with blockchain, right? Uh, we discussed this, I guess, in the last call as well. So let's say now when you take a four-wheeler to a uh, to a service center or your two-wheeler to a service center, and let's say one of the parts in the vehicle has come off, has has actually gone down. Let's say crash of, of your you know engine has failed or broken or the piston is uh, you know sort of uh, not creating the adequate pressure to generate the work for the, the horsepower and the mechanic says you need to replace the piston or you need to replace the crank shaft or you need to replace the you know the piston rings whatever right so the first question that he asks you is uh, what do you want to put in original or uh, you know uh, uh, local, that's the question, right? Well, how would you like to replace it? Original is a cost one, local is, you know, sort of cheaper one. And normally, the tendency is to go with the cheaper one because, you know, uh, from a financial point of view, right? But the point is, uh, let's say an example of uh, air aeroplane, aer right? Uh, that you fly in, you know, you fly in between Delhi to Jabalpur or you go from any part of one you know, within a country or outside a country, when you fly, typically a plane is supposed to be flying for X hours. When I'm saying X hours, uh, it can be 100 hours, it can be 200 hours. After flying for that many hours, a plane has to go for a mandatory fitness test for which it is, being, you know, uh, it gets a, a fitness certificate from DGCA. Unless a plane gets a fitness certificate from DGCA after the stipulated number of flying, the plane cannot take off without the fitness certificate, right? Uh, and before getting a fitness certificate, the plane actually gets through a rigorous test, right? A rigorous maintenance test, where the every you know every moving part, everything is checked in the plane before the engineers issue it a oh, fitness certificate. Now, let's say in some such situation, uh, there is a requirement of replacing certain part in aeroplane. Let's say, you know, some part. Um, I'm not an aeroplane expert, so I can't name what is what goes all into it. But for sure, it has an engine, so engine will have some moving components, right? So let's say uh, you know there is some part in the engine which needs to be replaced or which is nearing its aging. You know, let's say if the part's life is thirty thousand hours, it's almost like thirty thousand hours, and it needs to be replaced before a plane actually can take off. Now again, the same question: whether you want a original or a local, right? <laughs> let's say. Uh, Aircraft maintenance engineer asks the same question again, you know, uh, a local or a original, right? And and unfortunately, if somebody looks to replace it with a local for some reason, whether it's the inventory is it's not available in the inventory or it's way too costly or whatever reason, right? Think about the consequences it may actually fetch, right? A plane which is flying at let's say thirty five thousand feet or forty thousand feet above, right? The sea level what can happen and what can happen to the people who are flying into it, right? It's, it's, it can be a real disaster. And that's the reason why our organization has started to put their spare parts on a blockchain based ledger so that each part, where is it going, where is it getting fitted, you know, can actually be traced back, you know, uh, uh, to the manufacturer. And that way it becomes, it gives a lot more confidence to the user, to the DGCA, to you and me as flyers, everybody right, in the overall system who are getting who are going to be impacted with it, right? So that traceability in supply chain is so much more important, right? And this was just from one a, an automotive segment. Uh, similarly, you know, uh, as we said earlier, right? Uh, when we talk about digital content, whether it's movies, whether it's music, whether it's advertisements, anything. So there has been a lot of uh, there's been a focus on actually bringing all of this on a blockchain based systems, right? Um, okay, um, so yeah, so India Mahindra has been working with IBM, you know, to create a common blockchain platform for supplier to manufacture transactions. 
if you remember when i was giving the previous session i talked about a infograph i talked about a slide when i showed you there are hundreds of stakeholders in a car manufacturing uh, you know ecosystem hundreds of them right from manufacturers to oems to you know people who are actually integrating for some assemblies for manufacturer and all that they, they are brought together and then they come to the assembly plant where all of them put together in a car or a vehicle to you know complete but what is happening at the back end is there are multiple companies coming and you know contributing to this overall ecosystem i chain uh, visibility or the trust trust on the supply chain is very really important in terms of the component vendors or you know the engineers or i don't the regulator getting a view of it right so yeah uh, in a couple of european countries as far as automotive is concerned they have also started to actually the ev the electric vehicles which are with their driving uh, you know the uh, you know uh, there have been cases where they using blockchain for you know uh, multiple ways people are leasing out the vehicles on a blockchain based ledger right <laughs> even that is a used case today uh, similarly in the banking and finance sector right uh, uh there has been a lot of transformation this is one area which is really seeing a lot of transformation there right so those of you who would be who would have their friends families uh you know overseas and who are uh, who know the process of cross pair border payments right they would understand and appreciate that it's such a tedious and costly affair right when you transact money from one part of the globe to the part of the globe right you end up paying transaction fee at both the sites some 7 to 10% of transaction fee at both sites and of course it's not a you know a transparent and you know quick process it takes some time with blockchain based systems they are looking to you know revolutionize that the settlement time settlement time is almost real time compared to a couple of days even today when you actually go to a bank and do you deposit a check let's say you have a i often give this example right um, so so let's say you know what are our participants let's say samir has a birthday of day saturday let's say he has a birthday on tuesday right and you know he wants to take all of us uh, for a for a birthday party let's say it's not covid times and he has actually you know chartered a plane for all of us to take us to singapore to give us some party around marina right uh, so so and you know he has good amount of money so let's say he has uh, 5 lakhs 10 lakhs as there uh, in his in his account and he has a check for 50 lakhs you know which he can deposit and he has kept this 50 lakhs only for his birthday celebrations so unless this 50 lakhs which is in form of a check gets deposited into the bank account he will not be able to use it right so let's say he deposits the check today or maybe he deposited the check yesterday so by the time it will actually come and reflect in his account it will take some t plus 3 normally t plus x x is 3 here t plus 3 days of time for getting the check uh, you know um, reflected in his account right getting this check cleared and if it is a different bank check then it might even take up to 5 days time right so so that sort of delay now see uh, samir has 50 lakhs but then it's, it's basically in form of a check which will take some time to get you know uh, converted into his account right so uh, so despite his best intention he may not be able to take all of us on a chartered flight to singapore right uh, because the check did not get uh, cleared in, in in the time that was needed on the real time now think about similar situation in 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 today's uh, scenario on an everyday basis there are billions of dollars which are stuck in the banking system right why because the clearing clearance time is not real time it takes some amount of days 3 4 5 now you know business is always done with money unless there is liquidity unless there is money in the system you cannot do business on promises right so, so you know samir cannot make a promise to the to the uh, chartered plane uh, company that you know i'll pay you 5 days later on you please by yesterday right because my check is stuck or maybe you know he cannot actually make a payment or he cannot promise a payment to the hotel in singapore mm -hmm. saying that you know my check will get released in 4 days i'll make a payment there right yeah. they will not actually accept that so think about those billions of dollars which actually get on a daily basis in the banking system why because there is no daily or no real time clearance had that much money there been in the system in the pipeline which is getting stuck people or companies could have done better business with that money right so that that's that's the beauty here right that's way that's how you know blockchain has the potential to transform uh, banking and financial services right 
Uh, yes, and then uh, let me go further, right? Uh, and yes, of course, we can, uh, for governance, blockchain is simply a boon, right? I would say, right from voting to fraud prevention to compliance, blockchain is something which can be utilized everywhere, right? Uh, right from asset registration, you know, I'm sure most of you have encountered this. Often we encounter that, you know, somebody who is uh, owning the land, right? Say, you know, the flat that you own or the, or the house that you own. You may not know 50 years back who was owning that land, you know. And even for that matter, you know, uh, 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 that land may be, con may, may be stuck in controversies. There might be multiple parties claiming their right to the same piece of land, right? Uh, the way it happens today, right? The, the, the way the land records are maintained. So that sort of fraud prevention, that sort of compliance can be inherently built into a blockchain-based system because of the cryptographically secure data, right? So that's the beauty that blockchain provides or brings to the table as far as when utilizing the overall governance for various activities, right? Think of another example, and this is already like, by the way, right? Uh, the fertilizer subsidy that the government gives the, to the farmer, right? Uh, it's been some time when you, you might have heard that uh, farmers have uh, not been able to get fertilizers, right? All the amount of money that that's been because subsidized fertilizer was actually sent in. A lot of black marketing was done with that, right? Now so with the with the blockchain based system, there is no scope of doing this, right? I can give you one example here. Some time back, I was working with a startup in Hyderabad, and uh, as part of my previous role, right? And they were looking to okay. Before I start with that. Uh, how many of you over here have heard about chit funds, right? Just give your answers on chat. You can put uh, like a yes over there. Okay. Um, okay. So, heard about chit funds, right? Absolutely. So, what is the first thing that actually comes to the mind when you heard when you hear chit fund? What's the first impression that comes across the mind when you hear about chit funds? Fraud, scam. Yeah, yeah, absolutely correct. Yeah. There, there are tens and tens of cases where, you know, uh, there are this fraud of uh, around it funds, right? Scams. So, so we were working with this startup, right? And um, they were looking to create a solution for bringing chit fund business on blockchain. And you know what? The chit funds have been a phenomenally successful way uh, for the small savings, small savers, right? People, household savings. Few parts in the country, few states in the country are very high on chit fund, particularly West Bengal, particularly, you know, few states towards South, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, uh, Kerala. There are very, they, they, you know, there is a big turnover, annual turnover is into hundreds of crores from, from a chit fund point of view, right? Okay, uh, somebody is saying they don't know chit funds. Uh, okay, so maybe, you know, we will take that discussion later on. But uh, just to give you a perspective, chit funds are very small, effective. There's effective mechanism of a small savings. Just like, you know, you might have heard people forming committees, right? Uh, uh, where people tend to come together, they pull some X amount of money, and then, you know, one of those 10 people take that money, you know, utilize it some meaningful manner, whatever they want to do with that money, you know, for one month. The next month, or somebody else is turned to pick that money, that entire booty up, and then they're going to use it. That's what's typically very most basic sense, right? But then when you talk about from an organized point of view, then chit fund businesses learn bigger, where they are, there is a regulator, the state government, it's a state government subject, right? Where there is a regulator, the stamps and revenue department is the regulator for the, you know, chit fund business. And there are multiple companies, you know, uh, which basically um, uh, open up chit funds, they open up people, subscribe to those chit funds, uh, they put money in those, uh, it's not chit coin, it's actually chit funds. <laughs> so, uh, so a lot of that is stuff happens. So this company was looking to bring, uh, you know, uh, chit fund business on the blockchain stuff. And uh, I was actually working for, uh, with them from IBM's point of view. And uh, believe me, they struggled to... Um, okay, I'll take these questions in a, in a while. So believe me, you know... Uh, uh, we all have we studied, you all have studied blockchain, you know, in the last five, six days. So I'm sure you may have understood one thing very clearly, that blockchain is an effective way to have a, a irrefutable proof for any transaction, right? We talked about immutable ledgers, we talked about blockchain where all the transaction records are maintained and all that, right? 
So that means whenever somebody is giving money to anybody or whenever somebody is making a promise to somebody, committing to somebody, it's no more, you know, can we put in air? It's basically documented, put, recorded on a blockchain. You can come back after even 100 years and you can revisit the record there, right? Uh, uh, which will be, of course, which, which cannot be tampered with, right? Now, we were, we made a presentation to the, you know, the, uh, to the chief secretary, uh, you know, uh, a couple of people from the Department of Revenues, uh, you know, Stamps and Revenues and all, just to put them, just to give them a view that how important was uh, blockchain as a technology in terms of, you know, uh, making chit funds scam free, right? And uh, after almost like a year of that, you know, meetings, showing POCs and all, they finally agreed. The point I'm trying to put over here is, uh, we did not actually try to do away with the get, with the regulator. We actually onboarded the regulator. Why? Uh, companies will not actually look to adopt to some such situation, some such solution where there is inbuilt compliance. Why? It takes away the power of manipulation from the company, right? Any company would who, who's used to do manipulation in the sector would like to keep that, that thing open. With blockchain, you take away that power of blockchain. You take away the, the probability of doing the manipulation with the system, right? That's what is the benefit of using blockchain. So after all those conversations, finally the you know the, the, the Telangana government agreed, and the solution actually uh, was uh, was developed. It was adopted by the government, and uh, not just government. You know, Niti Aayog actually uh, uh, saw the value of that solution, and gradually. It was adopted in lot many other states across India, right? So my point is, the, the compliance, the government checks and what wants to put, it is anyways embedded in the solution. So there is no scope of fraud, right, in, in such system. So blockchain and governance is so much important. So today you see all these people who are, you know, not paying their taxes or who are, you know, uh, not paying their different the taxes, be it whether it's GST, whether it's in term and form of we bills people you know uh, create uh, 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 forged records to to save all that gradually all of that will go away right because government actually hand on the back and is using technologies like blockchain ai and all right uh, so you know uh, you will see in a few years from now i'm sure you those of you who are keeping a tab at the at the, at the news they will really appreciate it in last few years, the number of taxpayers have increased drastically, drastically, many fold in India, right? Just because, you know, uh, all the systems, all the KYCs are getting in place, government is able to track what we own, what we don't own, which are the bank accounts, because now there is a single KYC across all the different banks, right? So earlier people used to give one document to one bank, another document to another bank, you know, that way there was no connection between the two accounts, right? Which is not happening today. Today with everything is tied up with one ID. And that's which, that is really adding a lot of transparency to the overall system. So that means governance really gets, you know, a, a leg up when you talk about uh, utilization of uh, blockchain-based technologies, right? Uh, this is another, you know, uh, good example. We just talked about it briefly where the patient data, you know, uh, data in healthcare segment is really, uh, uh, can you can be the, means the patient can be in control of who uses their data, in what way do they allow the utilization of the data and all. Uh, you know, so blockchain tools can really help that, that way, right? Okay, uh, we talked about insurance a while back, right? Now there are a lot of insurance companies which are using uh, blockchain for risk coverage, for actually making the claims processing. Uh, earlier it used to take a lot of time and, you know, companies used to uh, deny a few claims as well for, for finicky reasons. Now they cannot do that. They have to be a particular, you know, reason which will get recorded. And, you know, you can always go back and you can always uh, open it up. You can always counter it, right, with the right set of information, right set of data, right? Why do you, why do you deny my, my, my claim, right, like that? Uh, we already talked about that, that in the royalty settlement, in advertisement settlement, in digital rights management, you know, how blockchain is, is actually being used today, right? Oh, let me take a pause and I would just let me have a look at the various, uh, you know, questions that are there in the chat before I go, go forward. Okay. Um, in the meanwhile, in case you have any questions, guys, please feel free to put it on chat. Uh, I'll be happy to take it up. Let me just have a look. Okay. 
ya. Uh, hey mom, uh, towards the end, I will, I will talk. I'll take you through a link uh, through which you can join a community of blockchain users, blockchain developers that will help you enhance your uh, learning. Uh, also, the same link can help you uh, to get prepared for blockchain related jobs. It will give you a lot of learning content there, right? Um, uh, Nikita, where we can use a blockchain for insurance claiming where uh, the stakeholders or hospitals. So if you would have heard me, you know, the solution is already live right now, uh, Likita, and uh, uh, both in terms of insurance claiming, yes, it is there. Uh, from our end user point of view, you would not know how it is being used because you do not connect directly. You would not, it's abstracted from you, right? But then underneath, yes, it is there. In a justice system where FIR go through all changing due to high external pressure, why no one in the world, any government thought of blockchain. Look, uh, Anant, uh, the answer lies in the question, right? Uh, and if you might have heard me, uh, nobody wants to give up uh, that power of manipulation, right? Because everybody is liberating that to, for their own sake. This actually reminds me of a very good use case I can share that, you know, I had been associated with in the past, right? Um, um, so there was a startup, right? Uh, and this uh, use case had been, you know, in works for some time. Uh, this was around four years, five years back, right? Um, so in India, if you recall, there had been a lot of cases of accidents on road where people have been stopped on gunpoint you know, on a highway and they've been looted and, you know, all sorts of things happen in, in, in vehicles, right? And despite your best of, you know, trying to reach out to uh, uh, a PCR or calling a 11100 or, you know, calling all those numbers, nobody turns up. So I'm trying to answer to you, Anant, uh, you know. Uh, so uh, so there was this startup that we were working with in, in Bangalore, right? And uh, the idea was this, Anant. It's basically, it, it ties back to what work, the question that you have put across. Now, this startup was looking to create a solution for a vehicle whereon uh, the in view mirror of the car, right, in, in, inside the car, they put up a device, uh, an audio video, right? There was a camera, there was uh, audio the recording facility, and that they also had a, a, a location tracking system, right? The latitude, longitude could be captured from that device, right? So they had this device installed in the review mirror of the car, of the car and uh, this device was connected to multiple panic buttons which are installed in the different places in the car, like under the seats, on the side panels, on the roof, you know, at, at places which can be easily accessible uh, just in case. So what the overall, uh, you know, the, the scope of work of this device was, Someone when who is trying to stop a car on a gunpoint or some, some, something wrong is happening inside the car, the passenger inside the car can reach out to one of these panic buttons, okay? And uh, the moment the panic button is pressed, one of the panic buttons is pressed, you know, the device inside, which is, uh, you know, installed inside the trivial mirror, it starts to broadcast the audio video of whatever is happening inside the car to a backend server, okay? And what it also does along with that is, it also creates a notification ticket. It also creates a ticket on the police headquarters uh, server, wherein, you know, it carries the date, time, the latitude, longitude of the device. And then the application at the police headquarters looks for the nearest PCR van to this, you know, device location. Will be most affected by blockchain. Sanjana, uh, 
uh, every industry is looking to adopt to blockchain and actually the idea to adopt this to to streamline the processes to be more compliant when you are more compliant the business is thriving right okay um means money is there uh, why don't he pay from the account in which the check is look on the check is available to 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 uh, uh you know check is available to him but that check will only be unless he deposits the check in the bank right he cannot uh, tear the 50 lakh check in four pieces and give 25 lakh to one airline company 25 lakhs to a bank uh oh, bank bank i'm not saying bank Yeah, JIT funds. I'm sure you're most of you are aware of. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you for responses there. Um, what is the use of 